everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, there's breaking news out of Israel. The government there just got even more unstable. So I'm going to catch you up with what's going on in case you haven't caught my previous videos. But essentially, what happened is, okay, so for 12 years you had Benjamin Netanyahu. That was the prime minister, right? And people were wanting to try and get him out, so much so that this coalition came together of different political parties to get rid of him. And it was a very unlikely, uh, well, I don't know if it was unlikely, but it was a gambit, a, a risky thing to try and uh, get him out. And it actually worked. So what happened was uh, Neftali Bennett, pictured right here, he became prime minister. And it's supposed to be like a deal where he's prime minister for the first half. And then after that, it goes to another guy named uh, Yair Lapid. And um, so, yeah. Now, it turns out that not everyone one has been happy with how this uh, new government has been going. Uh, the direction that it's taken. They've been unhappy with different things. And um, the first thing that happened to basically kind of throw a wrench in all this was you had this girl right here uh edith silman she is more of like a right-wing person uh religious and she was upset about something that had to do with uh leavened bread being served in hospitals during passover week which during passover week everything's supposed to be unleavened in in accordance with jewish law right and so she was upset about that, and she left the coalition, which made it to where uh, in the Neset, they had uh, an equal split. There was not a majority anymore. Uh, her leaving made it so that the coalition no longer had a majority. It, majority, it was strictly 50-50. Um, well, actually, I think it's like 60 60 to 60 because I, I think that's how many I think there's 120 Nesset members anyway okay so that kind of uh, was concerning and then during Passover there was a lot of stuff going on with the Temple Mount and there were people that weren't happy because like part of the coalition is this Arab party called Ram and they were upset about how that situation was being handled by the Israeli government. And so they froze uh, they froze their participation uh, in the coalition. But uh, I just found out today that they've actually unfrozen it and now they're back. So uh, it says, Israel's teetering government, this is New York Times, Israel's teetering government breathes again as Arab party rejoins. And even back then, because I covered that, it seemed like they were mostly freezing, quote unquote, they were freezing um, their participation in the coalition more as like a symbolic thing, as like a warning, like, hey, we're going to do this now. This is a warning to you. You better get this situation fixed. Okay, so now what happened today is there's another person that left. Okay, and I'm going to read some of this article. Israel's coal. This is from the Jerusalem Post. Israel's coalition crisis. Moretz, um, I think that it's. I think it stands for me member of the Neset. Moretz M K bolts Bennett's government. M K Gaida Renawi Zawabi Zawabi's departure will give the opposition a majority of 61 to 59 uh, members of the Neset and could bring about an election in the fall. Okay, so now uh, the government is really in danger. Nef Neftali, and Nef Neftali Bennett's and Yair Lapid's government is really in trouble. Now, there's another layer to this story before I read more of this. You you might remember, if you've been watching the channel, that um, Orthodox Jews are, are waiting for Messiah to appear. Okay, and this has everything to do with it. What's happening with the government? And do you and me believe in Moshiach, the same one that they're waiting for? No, because we're members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We know that Christ was the Messiah. However, 
the thing that's a little bit concerning is that um, their main rabbi passed away, um, Rabbi Kanvieski or Kanvieski, and he said that he he had said that he was in talks with Mashiach. So what that means is that the upper echelons of the rabbis in Israel believe that their top rabbi, who has now passed away, had met with Mashiach, which means that there's some guy out there that believes that he's the Messiah. And so I'm, su I'm sure that Kenevieski told others, so there's probably somebody who knows who that individual is. And so what I've wondered before on the channel is what happens when he comes out and then all the top rabbis confirm that it's Messiah. Uh, look what look what happens here. Okay, so this is on kabad.org. And um, this is, uh, you know, if you're familiar with the channel, channel, I like coming here. This is a Haredi... Um, meaning like a ultra orthodox Jew, like a, I think it's both Haredi and Hasidic. Uh, basically all you need to know is that it's an orthodox Jewish website that uh, explains Judaism. Primarily it's supposed to explain Judaism to Jews that are more on the secular side or like, uh, you know, reformist Jews. Like they're, they're trying to get everybody to become more, Orthodox. So this is like an outreach. It's like a revival website to help Jews understand their own religion. Those that are, I guess you could say, less active or have distanced themselves. Okay, so I like coming here to learn about Judaism. And they have this thing explaining uh, Messiah. Laws concerning kings and the Messiah. So look what happens. Imagine, imagine that the Israeli government uh, crumbles, it dissolves, there's instability, and then that man, whoever he is, declares or presents himself to the world as Messiah. Okay, so let's read what happens. So, the Messianic king will arise in the future and restore the Davidic kingdom to its former state and original sovereignty. So just from that right there, do you think that the Israeli government, as we currently know it, would continue to function with a prime minister? Uh, probably not. So I, I've brought up the scenario before. What happens if this guy comes out, many different rabbis confirm that he's Messiah, and pretend that you're a member of government, like pretend that you're an Orthodox Jew, uh, or even just like a conservative Jew, and you're in government, you're in the police, you're in the military, you're in important positions of power, and you believe that it is Messiah, are you going to listen to the current government, or are you going to listen to the newly uh, revealed Messiah? And are you going to accept him as king and obey his orders? What do you think about that? Okay, so it says he will build the sanctuary, meaning the third temple, and gather the dispersed of Israel. All the laws will be reinstituted in his days, as they had been four times. Sacrifices will be offered in the sabbatical years, meaning the Shemitahs and Jubilee years which is every 50 years, will be observed fully as ordained by the Torah. Anyone who does not believe in Mashiach or whoever does not look forward to his coming denies not only the teachings of the other prophets, but also those of the Torah and of Moses, our teacher. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much all I need to... Uh, read from this. If you want to learn more, there's a whole lot more here that you can read. What's this? One is not to presume that anything of the ways of the world will be set aside in the Messianic era or that there will be any innovation in the order of creation. Rather, the world will continue according to its norms. Um... 
The sages said there is no difference between the present age and the messianic era, but delivery from subjugation to foreign powers. Let's see. In, in the era of the messianic king, when his kingdom will be established and all of Israel will gather around him, all of them will live or all of them will have their pedigree determined by him by means of the Holy Spirit that will rest upon him, as it is said. He will sit as a refiner and pure and purifier. His he will or sorry, first he will purify the descendants of Levi, saying, This one is a legitimate Cohen or a priest, and this one is a legitimate Levite, while diverting those of improper lineage to the rank of Israelites. Thus it is said, the governor Nehemiah said unto them, Until there will arise a Cohen with the Urim and Thummim, uh, from you this can infer that the determination of presumed pedigree in the public declaration of lineage is by means of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay, so you get the idea, and you can read more about it here. I'll put all these articles in the description below. Um, now, we had covered this article. Uh, look at this. So this is back in 2019. This is when uh, Benjamin Netanyahu was, uh, <clears throat> when his government was starting to fall apart. It says, Rabbi who predicted Trump presidency has shocking new prediction for Israel's next government messiah. Uh, quote, something with this election is going to happen out of nowhere that's going to be stunning, that nobody expects. In order for Jews to repent, to get close to God, to get close to their Torah, this government must be removed. Talking about Benjamin Netanyahu. Um, in his words, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu quote, must be deposed. Uh, at press time, the fate of the Israeli government is very unclear. The country is deeply divided, and no obvious winner has yet emerged from the second round of voting for the 22nd Neset. Okay, down here. Uh, basically, Bibi has to be uh, deposed. God is going to get rid of him politically. Kesson asserted, Kesson does not believe that the Messiah will immediately immediately replace Netanyahu. Quote, you need a transition guy. The person I have in mind on the political scene, his name is Gideon Sa'ar. Now, that guy did not become the prime minister. It's Naftali Bennett. But my question is, you know, this uh, rabbi here uh, in those that follow him, is that how they're viewing the current government? That it's simply a transition government and that the next one will be Messiah. So you see how things could kind of get out of hand really quickly with, go with what's going on here. This just happened today. This just happened today. All the way up until today, okay, after Edith Selman left, they at least there was at least a 50-50 uh, control, right? It was, well, it was 60 to 60. But as of today, now it's 61 to 59. And so if something, if, if this government collapses, if there's elections in the fall, like what it's saying here, what happens after that? Is that the time that that guy, that Kedavieski was meeting with, um, that believes that he's Messiah? Is that when he's going to make his appearance, or or even sooner, before that? Uh, don't know. I don't know. Uh, it says Kesson does not believe that. Oh wait, we already read that. In essence, Kesson is claiming that the Jewish state needs a transition leader who will help the Jews return to Torah in preparation for the arrival of the Messiah and the full redemption. The full redemption, that's what they talk, that's what they refer to as when the Messiah comes in the Messianic age. It's the redemption. And that leader cannot be Prime Minister Netanyahu. What kind of leader is necessary today? According to Kesson, it has to be someone who can present himself as friendly and of assistance to spirituality. Uh, I'm not looking at this politically. Now, I don't think that's how they view uh, Naftali Bennett, so 
I don't know if the same person is viewing him as a transition person or if there needs to yet be another transition person that is more spiritually uh, in tune. Uh, I don't know. But th this is the situation right here. Okay. So let's read a little bit from this. Uh, the government of Prime Minister Naftali Bennett and alternate Prime Minister Yair Lapid suffered a serious blow on Thursday when another member of Nesset announced she is leaving their, their governing coalition. Moretz uh, MK Gaida Zinawawi, uh, sorry, Renawi Z Zawabi sent a letter to Bennett and Lapid saying that she no longer saw herself as part of the coalition. She also announced that she would not accept her appointment as Israel's next consul general in Shanghai. Quote, I entered politics because I saw myself as an emissary of Arab society, which I represent. Unfortunately, over the last few months, for narrow political reasons, the heads of the coalition preferred to strengthen their right side. Again and again, the heads of the coalition preferred to take harsh, hawkish right-wing steps on key issues related to Arab society. She cited the Al-Aqsa, the Temple Mount, uh, Sheikh Jara settlements, house demol demolitions, the citizen citizenship law, and law land confiscations in the Negev. Quote, uh, when it came to the needs of Arab society and communities, housing, employment, and education, they were indifferent. And here's a picture of her here. So so th that's the reason why she pulled out. And you have to think that as more and more people pull out, is it going to give other people uh, the encouragement they need to pull out? Is it is, Basically, is it going to be like a snowball effect? So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, but this is... The breaking news, uh, I think it's interesting. I think that we need to watch it. Um, I don't I don't know uh, if that guy is going to come out and proclaim himself Messiah. Um, it, it, it's also possible that, that maybe there isn't a guy out there. Maybe Kenevieski was making it up. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying that he's a liar, but like, what if, I don't know, what if he was kind of old and senile? What if he was losing his mind or... What if, um, for pride reasons, maybe he just wanted to have that claim? Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there is a person right now that believes himself to be Messiah. If that's the case, and if he's recognized by the rabbis in Israel, things could get really interesting really fast. So... All right, that's gonna be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Uh, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share this and I'll talk to you guys.